good afternoon everyone uh, today has been busy for everyone particularly as our finish today so I, i'm not gonna complete this one we're gonna end uh, as short as possible so this is a short tutorial on pytest um i'm gonna share my screen and just go over it quickly So you uh, for PyTeal, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm going to recommend you to watch these videos. This is our videos that are created by Algorand. By Algorand. So uh, this is an updated video. They used to have another video on PyTeal. I think they removed that and they have created this one. So uh, for knowledge on PyTeal, I would recommend this one for for you guys to see. So we're not gonna see a tutorial on this one. Uh, and we'll just move forward on uh, me showing you how you can do PyTest on your Python codes. Uh, so Python is a testing for Python. It's a very popular testing framework. It's a simple and powerful way to write tests for your Python code. Uh, it's simple, so it has documentation, which is very clear documentation. You can also go over the documentation and try the examples if you want to address it has a lot of functionalities to do testing so you can go over that um, i'm going to show you now three points on pytest uh, by showing you a small sample code uh, we're going to see we're going to do the testing and we'll see it through together uh, the other thing i want to mention here is when you create the testing for any only any python code make sure on the name of your testing file make sure you put a test this test word in it because pytest uh, and uh, it will run your testing uh, when you call that file if, I, if it has any test uh, word on your naming uh, it might miss your testing or it might not work so try to include test the work test on your uh, file naming process. So uh, the other thing is just simply when you run a PyTest, a PyTest uh, test, you all you have to do is just run this command PyTest and the path of the file name that you want to test, or the where the uh, testing is written. Just simply do that and run, and it will do uh, the testing based on the code you provided. Uh, the installation is simple. Just install with this with this one line of command, and automatically will be saved, uh, will be loaded on your system, and you can just start running uh, your testing. So I have put two differences, which are this one and this one. This is on PyTest, and this is a unit test mock. Uh, I will show you what this is the purpose of this mock purpose. But I have put these two references, and again this one another reference for Python programming language. So make sure to check that also. So right on track in Algorand, Python is the main language. So it's better for you to watch that video and understand it as much as you can. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna move forward to the code. Uh, I'm visible, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm audible, right? So uh, you, I just created a Python environment simply, and uh, after that, what I did is I just created this module folder, write my Python code, or it could be a contract, it doesn't matter. And for my testing part, I created this folder and put this contract test with py file. Like I showed you, I tried to put that this word on my naming. Uh, also, as a best practice, when you name your testing file, make sure it also reflects this file. Uh, this uh, file name of my contract that I am, uh, I want to, is, is contract with PY. So I try also to mention that this is that is for the contract file. So naming the like this is much advisable and recommended. So try to do 
this kind of structure when you do your testing between your Python file or contract file module. So when we go back to the testing part, uh, simply this is a sample uh, course. It's just a simple Python function that are two numbers and this one divide two numbers. So, so to write a, func a test to test this R function is doing as supposed to for the divide as supposed to, we just simply write this. This is quite simple. So all you have to do is uh, first I uh, import my module, which means this one, the, the one that I want to paste, and simply I set this add for add check. I call the func the function here. I call my contract file as contract here. So control dot add will fetch this function. I give it two values. So assert is uh, checking if it's true or not. If it's not true, it will throw your test will fail. If it's uh, if it's not true, if it's false, it will uh, fail your test false. And if it's true, that your test passes. So it checks if strain four based on this function are equal to seven. So if it is the assert is true, so it will pass. The test will pass. The same thing goes here also. This is another way of uh, doing the assertion. So if four, 4 divided by 0, the divide function is this one, it's clear. So if 4 divided by 0 is, uh, it sh should return an error, right? Because 0 is a uh, number is not divided by 0. So it's saying that it should create an error if 0 is, uh, if 4 and 0 is given, 0 are the dividend. So it should, it should create an error, which is true. So it will pass. But if I give it four, for example, here four, four by four, it shouldn't throw an error, right? So this uh, this function is checking if it does throw an error, so it will fail if you make it four. It's just a different way of writing this asset like this. We can choose to do to write it this way, but just another way of writing your testing. So if I run this function, uh, this testing function, like I told you, you are PyTest, and write the or, or write the path of the testing file it's found under test the name is this one or either you can just uh, be on your cp on your test uh, directory and just run by this both way you can do you can run the mistake so like i said it just passed because three plus four is seven it's true it passes for divided by zero throws an error which is what's expected in the testing uh, condition. So it, it is true. So again, it will pass. So it's quite simple. I'm going to show you now how we can call a class and test a class if you have a class in your function. OK, so this is a piece of this one. This is a simple function. Here we have this class bookstore. So the next example will be how we can uh, test a class functionality. So here it is. The class is a bookstore class where there's an array, books, where books are stored in that array. Uh, the add is just when you assign a new book, new array will be added on the list array. It, will, it goes like this. You save the data, it append them on the array, simple like that. And what else is there? And we have two parameters for the bookstore. The, Max, my, sorry, maximum size. We are defining how much uh, one can include on that particular array. So if we give it five, uh, one can only include five books on this particular array. So we, we give a condition how much item should be stored in the library. This one checks the size of the array again. Uh, this one uh, counts the number of books in that particular array in return the count number. And this is just uh, a simple for loop to uh, sum up or to count the price of the books. And this is, OK, for first, let's just test this one.
though to first to to make sure to take the class function the class method here you have to first call this class name so this is how you call it book is about to bookstore uh, if we'll automatic bookstore have to be first imported here from the module contract like this so after the importation you can call the class name here and assign it a variable and using that variable you can call every function inside this class so we're here we're calling it the add function so I'm just calling here book to add. I'm giving it a name, the book accept parameter here, the item name, which is, uh, let's say the book name is the firm. So uh, I'm checking if after the book is added, is equal to the firm. It's only checking the item is what added, which will return true. Again, on the second one, okay, this one, just forget it. There is no outer function here. This is too short. So if I run this one, it, it should pass. maximum size let's just from this part of the class and let's run this one the one that doesn't require a parameter for the class It just I have two classes here. This class doesn't require another additional uh, parameter, and this one require additional parameter maximum size. So let's just first see this one, and we'll move to this part of the testing. So basically, we're just checking if the book has added uh, the name of the firm. So I just added the name here. So it probably has to be similar with the name of the firm. So it will pass the testing. So the, the things that you have to notice here is if I, for example, I'm coming this one, I think on this class we have the author function. I name it, I give the author name of the book this one and it is a do the same um, assertion, which it will be true. Let's just remove this parameter. It will pass again. So true. So if you notice here, I'm calling this bookstore class twice as the same here. Uh, twice, both in this function or in this function. And if I added another function in this class, I have to do the same thing, calling this fun bookstore declaration again here, again here. If I have another function that class, I have to remit the same thing again and again. So to avoid that, PyTest has this functionality named fixture which just define you if you have any similar thing that you have to call any of the function, you just uh, capture that one and you give it one uh, place as a fixed place and you can call that over and over again. So the next concept I want to show you is about fixture. So let's just, uh, we can just uncomment un this one. So what I'm doing here is I'm just defining a book function for the bookstore class. You have no parameter. So instead of just declaring this book with equals to bookstore again and again, I just comment that out and I will pass this book as a parameter on the builder functions. And it automatically dictated it's for the, this uh, fixture will actually will be detected by the functions and it gives you the same purpose. It will pass again. So uh, I think it's clear the fixture, the purpose of fixture. It just will give you one thing. You can just will declare something and you can use that. Uh, you can reuse that code or use that fixture uh, declaration in different functions. 
you just have to pass the function name that you give there and it will give you the same function as this the, the one with like the formula like this one okay now hoping you understand fixture now we're gonna move to this part of the class which access parameter Has the same functionality it just has diff, uh, additional functions like it accept additional data additional parameter so so based on the second function uh, here my the second class has a parameter additional maximum size so let's give the maximum size that had needed to be added on the array would be five for example it could be any number so again this book parameter is calling this picture uh, that we declared here so let's see if this test pass i'm just uh, here i'm just adding the firm book on as the first book on the array so the book size i'm, I'm just adding one single book so the size is one so uh, and it has it doesn't have to be maximum than the, the maximum size which is five so it should pass uh, for example if i give it this six books it should fail because the maximum size we give it is five and we are passing here six books which will be an error so the testing will pass it will fail. Uh, again here i'm just fetching the book how many books are there on the array so the gate books function here uh, will just check or count the amount of books that are in the list and it will return the number of items. So I'm just, since I already had one book, uh, the only book that I'm going to get should be the firm. I think, where is it? There? So it's just this one, it's just counting the maximum amount of books. So if the book added is uh, larger than the maximum size, it will throw an error. But uh, it will throw an error, which in this case, I already declared it what kind of error it should uh, output. It is an overflow error. So if uh, there is only maximum of five uh, amount, and if we add six books, it will throw an overflow error and the test will fail. Uh, it, it will pass because I'm just raising an error. If there's above, you should the error should be overflow, that is the uh, error should be, but since now I'm already only adding one book, that is will pass again. Passes. This is the second about fixture. Uh, I think that this thing also is quite simple. Uh, so this is the second concept I want you to get. And the other concept is this one, the mockup. What is unit test mockup means? So let's assume that we have this database to store our data, our books and just record everything. Uh, so we have to have a connection with our database. So when we when we have this connection between our data and our database, making a test in that connection is quite hard. So for example, you write your code here, considering one book, there's one book, I'll do this, I'll do that. But if you have a connection on your database, the database data can be changed anytime. So it means your test will keep falling every time. So to avoid that, uh, using unit test mockup, instead of using the actual database connection, you can give as your database connection and you can just create, uh, you can just test your functions based on that mockup data instead of the real time database. So that's the purpose of mockup testing. So let's just assume there is a bookstore database. Uh, in real life or in any production project, this bookstore database has uh, an external API connection with another uh, database and stuff like that. Let's just assume that. But instead of using that part, we're going to create here a mockup database using the Unistate mockup. So you have to import Unistate mock, import mock like this. Uh, this is the documentation about Unistate. If you want to go over it more, you, you have it here or associated from the slide, so you can check that. So just to show you what the mockup can do for you. So let's say we have added two books and we're calling our database class like this here. 
uh, we I have already imported above, so I called my bookstore database. So I'm giving it here uh, a mock data. First, let me show you with this one. Yeah, so this is the mock part with it's just a functional it will give you an option to just rename anything about the data so here we're just considering there is one value in our database right now uh, since we're adding two functions so let's just run this one and it should return an error right because here we're saying as a mock-up value we have one so when we add this the first the first one it it is it passes it's correct and when we add the second book, the database, our mockup value will uh, increment to two, but we are asserting it here by saying uh, it's equal to three books on our database or on mockup database, this state variable we assign. So every time you add book, the mockup will increase like as your real-time database would, uh, but the assertion we give it here is to three books, which will fail because we already added two books. Uh, if we give it like the third book, it should pass. It passes. Either you can add three books or you can make this one two books and it will it will give you the same thing. But instead of doing that, it's just another way of doing the same thing that we did using the mockup database. We will do like this one. And this one. I'm just giving it a, a value for the database here. So if it's the item is the firm, return one, which means the, the mockup will have the value one. And if we have the lake, that if the book that we've added the lake, uh, give the count two, which means it will be two books and the database will be added. We have one first. In the first calling and with in the second one we are returning two which means the mockup will be three so again the total books we have would be three which is equal to three so if we click it here we have this but we have this passing so basically to generalize this mockup just give you like a state variable you have to consider like a database a mockup database if we have if I have this amount of value in my database, in my mockup database, what should be the answer? So you, you test your functionality based on that. Because using real-time database to make a testing is really hard. You, you don't have, you, you have a thing, yes. So you use like this kind of mockups to write your testing. Okay, so this is about it, about pie testing. So on the recommendation, there are a lot of mechanisms. Uh, try to uh, go over that and learn new things. Uh, but for this tutorial, uh, this is about it. If you have any question, I guess you can address. Yes, Panuil. For API curl motors, you will store a sample record. Uh, the mockup documentation, I would recommend you to, to see that. It will give you more guides on how you can test API calls, more than the one I shared here. Shatu, uh, which one are you referring to? The last is the here. This one we have only two books. Okay, so here I'm just giving it a condition like this. So if I have the if I store the firm, the book the named the firm. I'm, I'm telling the mock database to update its value to one. And if I have the book 
if I enter the book select, if I add the book select, I'm telling the MOOC database to update its value. If it has already had one, it will add the new value, which means two, it will be three. So let's say I'm just giving it, I have put two, it means I have put two uh, le the books on my database. When I return to, there are two books that are added as a new additional in my database. So already the, fir the first one when the firm is good, uh, the firm book is added, the MOOC data already has a one count. And again, when this call is added, I'm returning two, so two books with the name, uh, the lake are added. So it will be three in general. Is that clear, Shatu? Okay. Any other question? I think it's quite simple. You just have to practice it and you will be good at it. Okay, if you have any questions or if not, you guys can just give me thumbs up. Okay, thank you, finally. Okay, thank you guys. So I have shared the files both for the sample code and the slide on the drive if you want, if you need to see it. Can't take that out. Okay, I think we can finalize our meeting. You guys have a long day today, so we'll give you the time to rest. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out on the Slack like always. Okay, thank you.